I always take a lot of pride in visiting communities myself in the interior. And uh, because not many of us who are living in the comfort of all those the urban area provides come and see the reality here in the interior. The struggles that you face, hardship that you face, children or mothers. Your dream is no different from the dreams of us who stay in urban area. We want our children to go to good school, you want your children to go to good school. We want our children to have better health facilities, you also want. You want to have good house, we also want. The dreams are same, but unfortunately, you are living in the interior so far from the urban area, sometimes you are forgotten, but not with this government. As you can see today, this project is pretty much completed. We are very proud of the work done by our staff, our engineers. This is one of the best sea walls that we have constructed. And this is a nature-based solution sea wall, not a concrete sea wall. The first nature-based sea wall that we constructed was in Viro village in Levuka. The problem that is caused by nature, the only solution is the nature itself. We have to use the nature to provide a solution to the problem caused by nature. Now, we have got about 160 sites to construct a sea wall, 160 sites, to protect about 112 villages. So some sites, the sea wall will protect two villages, like Namatukula, two villages will be protected with that sea wall. So 112 villages need to be protected, 160 sites. But that time it was a bit lower number. Eh? Financially, one uh, about uh, 500 meter concrete seawall, 500 meter concrete seawall, costs us about close to one million dollars. One million dollars, 500 meter seawall. Financially, it will be very difficult for government to complete that number of seawalls. You have to get that many uh, millions of dollars. Okay. Assume even if you have the money, the thing is this, what we want to construct, it should meet the aspirations of the community. Meaning that it should be, it should build an ecology, a natural environment. Because you've got your village here. You are a natural environment. We need to have a sea wall that we'll construct, it'll have an ecology where, you know, crabs, fish, etc. can breed. There'll be a natural um, uh, production of uh, uh, oxygen. They will absorb carbon dioxide. That's why you see we have planted vetiva. Some 50 years ago, vetiva grass was used very widely. But over the last two decades or three decades, gradually people have started to forget about vetiva grass, the importance of vetiva grass. And we are bringing it back. Vetiva grass, the rooting system can go up to 10 meter down, 10 meter. And the rooting system is like a net. So it holds the material very strongly. And it is a solution that is now widely used. We get calls from international, other countries, international organizations asking us, how did we do this seawall? What material did we use? Did we put some um, uh, um, iron roads? I said, no, nothing. It's just something that we asked. We designed it ourselves. Because one day we came back from Tavini after commissioning the seawall there and we said we can't afford to afford to 
construct this very expensive concrete sewer. There has to be a cheaper solution, a solution which is ecologically accepted, which is good for the nature, the environment. And we came up with this design that we use with the material available from here. We get our machines. And here we are, 120 meters of a nature-based solution CO. Some of you who have not seen, the last houses there were about to be washed away. Now you've got a new lease. And that new lease is not for 30 years or 40 or 50. It's for life. It's for life. I, on behalf of the government, I want to thank you for your patience, your perseverance. It's now done. Thank you for your support to our staff. You looked after them, you supported them. Thank you for providing the material, the boulders, the soil. Thank you very much for your support. We're very happy and we want to continue our journey to constructing the other remaining you know, 112 CEOs around the country. As I speak today, our Honorable Minister for Economy probably has just announced uh, a new $10 million grant from World Bank for Jobs for Nature Rehabilitation Program, JNR. And one of the projects, so there'll be various components, and one of the components would be construction of nature-based CEOs. Now, climate change is a reality. Some people thought that that won't be affected, etc. But small island states like Pacific, in the Caribbean region, we are on the receiving end. And we were able to, our government was able to see what's coming. In 2017, our Honorable Minister for Economy, after concurrence from the Honorable Prime Minister, during his budget address, announced the establishment of a dedicated ministry to deal with this issue of um, protection of communities from sea level rise, from excessive rainfall, Ministry of Waterways. Since 2017, we have not stopped. Um, it's my honor to be the first minister for this Ministry of Waterways. We were able to undertake massive projects to protect our community, protect our infrastructure, protect our roads, protect our schools. Some places, schools are about to be washed away. Roads are to be about to be washed away. Villages are being threatened by rising sea level. And we are very, very honored and blessed that we are able to protect our infrastructure, protect our communities, protect our villages. So I want to send a message to all the communities throughout Fiji that we will continue relentlessly with the limited resources we have. We will look at coming up with smart solutions, nature-friendly solutions, to protect our communities with the least minimum resources. Thank you very much, and I look forward to having a Talanoa with you. And I want to uh, say that you're not forgotten. You're out of sight, but you're not out of mind. Namumu village name being selected out of over 100 sites. God bless. Thank you. Thank you. Naka. The Nambumbu one is 120 meters uh, seawall. Uh, if we would have gone the conventional method of uh, constructing a uh, concrete seawall, it would have cost us uh, uh, no less than uh, $200,000.
but uh, here we were able to do it for about thirty thousand dollars. Uh, we were able to get the welders from the area, the uh, soil from that area, uh, and uh, we uh, got whatever uh, grass seedling from our nursery in Lambasa, uh, our our machine, our dumper truck, our excavator, and uh, only thing we had to pay for was fuel and of course uh, the uh, labor cost. So uh, it took us about two months uh, to construct that would have, would have been much uh, a lesser time had it had the weather uh, been good. But uh, today we saw you saw um, it's one of the best uh, constructed seawall, a very high quality seawall, you know, and uh, it's it's life guarantee. So we're very excited. We are able to protect and give life to 24, uh, 25 households in the village. Uh, they were uh, they were in a dilemma whether they need to be relocated. Uh, you know, uh, relocation uh, from the government's point of view is the last option because uh, it de we're dealing with people whose heritage is there, whose ancestors were born there, uh, their graveyards are there. They, they've got cultural uh, and um, you know emotional ties to the place, and uh, we if possible we if we can protect them where they are we will do that so uh, this is a an example of that case so we're very excited uh, when we saw the smiles on the faces of the uh, villagers and uh, you know, the ladies and the elderly who are there who, who know who could recall you know their uh, uh, past days you know with their forefathers so uh, we're very very happy with the outcome of the project